We are in a brand new series today called Habits. Say that with me, Habits, Habits. Does anybody in here have a habit? Yeah, anybody in here have a habit? And if you didn't raise your hand, you lying, right? Now when I said the word habit, do you have a habit? Did you think of something positive or something negative? Negative, negative right? Like you probably thought about biting your fingernails or smoking cigarettes or biting the inside of your mouth. Anybody do that? Bite the inside of your lip? Like when you're nervous or something? Right, those are, those are what we would consider habits. We're gonna talk about these sort of things, but not really in that light. I want you to think about your last normal day. So for me, weekends aren't normal days. Weekends are like different than my normal day because my normal day revolves around going to work and what that looks like. But if you think back to your last normal day, if you work, then what did you do at the beginning of your work day? Maybe you're a stay-at-home parent. And I'll just say, if you're a stay-at-home parent, you need a raise, all right, because that's a really hard job. Whatever you did on your last normal day, I want you to think about what did you do when you woke up? What was the first thing you did when you woke up? And here's what I know. The odds are very, very high that whatever you did on your last normal day, you did on the normal day before that and the normal day before that, right? So let's just say that on a normal day, you are woken up by your alarm clock, yes? Then I bet every normal day, you were woken up by your alarm clock. Now, if you're the kind of person that doesn't need an alarm clock, you wake up at 5.30 every morning without one, then your last normal day probably didn't have an alarm clock. Get what I'm saying? What did your last normal day look like? How did you wake up? What did you do when you woke up? Maybe you immediately looked at your phone. Maybe you looked at the calendar on your phone. Maybe you had to real quick look at social media and if you did, you have a problem. That's kidding. But, but a lot of people, that's one of the first things they do. They pick up their phone and they start scrolling to see what they missed while they were sleeping for the past eight hours. Come on, somebody. You probably took a shower on that normal day. I hope you took a shower. I hope today was a normal morning and you took a shower. If you didn't, you might not be employed very long at your job if you regularly did not take showers, right? But you probably had some sort of routine, something that you did every single morning in a certain order leading up to that normal day. You probably got home from work the same route that you went to work. You probably drive the same route every day on a normal day. And you know something very scary? is when you do that, you many times can drive home and not remember the drive home. Because it's part of your normal day. Maybe you work out, you exercise. Maybe you exercise in the evening instead of exercising in the morning. Maybe you have fast food every single day for dinner for your family, or maybe you cook a full-blown meal for your family and then complain that nobody helped you and that nobody helped you clean up. Is that anybody's habit routine? I'm just throwing it out there. Maybe you make the kids clear the table and put them in the dishwasher or wash the dishes. There's this routine. You might have a normal routine with your kids. Maybe you bathe your kids every night before bed and you put them in bed and you read them a story or a Bible story or you, you scratch their back until they fall asleep. Chances are there's some sort of consistent routine that you have. Maybe after you put your kids to bed, then you can sit down on the couch and you watch, you binge watch Netflix until you fall asleep. Maybe you spend a little bit of time in prayer and you journal. Maybe you sit down and decompress at the end of the day and you journal how your day went and what you went through and what you experienced. Maybe at the end of the day, you scoot a little closer to your spouse you ask them how their day was, you have some time alone with them. 
Hopefully, they don't reject you and push you away because you didn't shower that morning. <laughs> Hopefully, they draw you in and you have some sort of connection time, not just physically, but intellectually and emotionally. Hopefully, we're there for one another in the evenings to decompress. But chances are, whatever that looked like, and I know I'm drawing this out, whatever that looked like, the chances are that this normal day looked like the normal day before it and the normal day before that. Most of what you normally do isn't a result of conscious choices, but of daily habits. Daily habits, things that you do every single day. Much of what we do every single day is not a result of decisions that we're making in the moment, but of habits that we already have in our life. We're gonna, we're gonna decompress this, and again, I'm not doing a psychology sermon, but this is gonna look very different than most of my sermons. Duke University did a study in 2006 and what they found is that 40% 40, 40 of the actions that you take in any given day are not the result of decisions, but a result of habits. I just do this in response to this. This is how I do what I do in response to what's happening in my life. 40% of what you do every single day is a result of habits. Habits, habits, habits. We gotta we got get this in our minds. That's why if you want to change where you're going in life, then you want to change who you are becoming in life. Right, we're, gonna, we're, gonna, we're gonna decompress this. And in order to do that, we have to change our habits. I can recommend a book for you. I just got done reading. It's called Atomic Habits. I think I finished it like three months ago. Atomic Habits by James Clear. If you're a reader, Get that one. If you want to better help yourself in what you're doing every single day, Atomic Habits by James Clear. And he talks about the reality that many people have similar goals. I talked to somebody the other day and they said, well, you know, I know that I'm being successful if, you know, I set goals and I accomplish goals. And I'd say most of us have a lot of the same exact goals. Think about it. We want to have good relationships. Right? We don't want people mad at us and we don't want to be in fights all the time. Most of us want to be healthy, right? Most of us want to be healthy. We don't want to be on medication. We don't want to be feeling sick. The reality is that many of us have similar goals but dramatically different results. Why? James Clear writes in his book, because goals don't determine success. Systems determine success. Doing the systems that you set in your life determine success. Setting a goal and putting it on the wall and doing nothing about it, you just set a goal. How are you going to accomplish that goal? I'm going to lose 10 pounds. How? I don't know. I'm just going to do it. How? What's your plan? I don't have a plan. Well, what are you going to eat? I'm going to eat exactly what I've been eating. Guess what you're not going to do? Lose 10 pounds. What's the system by which you're going to do or accomplish your goal? I'm going to be a millionaire by 45. How? I don't know. Then you're not. Then you're not. I'm going to have enough money at 65 to retire. What's your goal? I don't know. Social Security. Nope. Not going to have enough money. Not going to have enough money to retire. Not going to happen. I'm sorry. I'm 42 years old. I'm not trying to tell you business, but you're not going to have enough money to retire. You're not. You gotta have a better goal. And you have to have a system by which you're going to accomplish those things. What's the system by which you're going to do this? If you're not saving any money now, you're not going to be ready to retire. I'm just throwing this out there. I'm trying to help somebody today, right? It's not about a goal. It's about what you actually do. Okay. You set an alarm clock every morning. Half of people set an alarm clock with no intention of actually getting out of bed when the alarm clock goes off. <laughs> That's the goal! That's the goal! 
set my alarm clock, gonna get out of bed, but you don't actually do it. What does it matter that you set the goal then? What's the system by which you're going to get yourself out of bed or accomplish that goal? A quote from his book goes like this. You don't rise to the level of your goals, but you will fall to the level of your systems. All right, so I said all that to get us to this point. I wanna talk about some spiritual systems. Spiritual systems in a spiritual perspective. And I wanna talk today about a really popular guy, a really popular story in the Old Testament, and his name is Daniel. Daniel in the Old Testament. And when I say the name Daniel in the Old Testament, if you were raised in Sunday school, what is the first story you think of? Daniel in the lion's den. And if you've never been in Sunday school to hear about Daniel in the lion's den, guess what? Instead of me reading the whole passage, we are gonna give you a Sunday school lesson. Is that okay? Go ahead and roll it. This is Daniel. Oh, hey. Who was a Jewish man who was taken to Babylon when he was very young. Mm -hmm. Daniel loved God and followed God's rules. He talked to God three times a day and asked God for help often. Daniel served in the Babylonian king's court for many years. Yeah, I know him. And under many kings. Hey, Daniel. Daniel always proved himself to be more capable than all the other court officials. I hear a lot of things. Wow, well, time. Daniel was serving under King Darius, and because of his great abilities, the king made plans to place him in charge of the entire empire. Wow, well, okay. The other court officials searched for some fault in Daniel, but they couldn't find anything wrong with him. He was faithful, responsible, and completely trustworthy. Yeah. Wait. The court officials realized the only way to get at Daniel would be to challenge his faith. Come on. So they went to King Darius. <laughs> Excuse me, your majesty. And advised him to make a law that for the next 30 days, any person who prays to anyone except King Darius will be thrown into the lion's den. I like it. King Darius signed this law, and once a Babylonian king signed a law, it could not be overruled. When Daniel learned of this law, he went home and knelt down, as he always did, to pray in his room with the windows open towards Jerusalem. He prayed three times a day, just as he always had done, giving thanks to God and asking for his help. The officials went to Daniel's house and found him praying. Gotcha! They went to the king and reminded him of the law. I remember. Well... Then they said that Daniel had been found praying to God three times a day. What? When the king heard this, he was very upset. Get over here. And he spent the whole day trying to think of a way to save Daniel. Wait, what? By that evening, the court officials came back to the king <coughs> and reminded him that no law signed by the Babylonian king could be overruled. So at last, the king gave orders for Daniel to be thrown into the lion's den. The king said to him, May your God, who you serve faithfully, rescue you. Then the lion's den was sealed shut with Daniel inside. The king spent the night fasting and couldn't sleep. Then very early in the morning, the king hurried to the lion's den. He called out, Hey, Daniel! Was your God able to rescue you from the lions? And Daniel answered, Long live the king! My God sent his angel to shut the lion's mouths so that they would not hurt me, for I have been found innocent in his sight. The king was overjoyed and ordered that Daniel be taken out of the lion's den. Then the king ordered the men who had schemed against Daniel to be thrown into the lion's den as punishment. Daniel was safe. There was not a scratch on him, for he trusted in God. All right. So I could have read that whole story to you, but I wasn't as cute as those guys. 
That's out of Daniel chapter six, if you wanna go and, and read that and study that out. It's a really great passage. But there's this little sentence in the middle of it as Daniel knelt down at the window that jumped out to me. And it said that he knelt down to pray just as he had done before. Just as he had always done. It didn't matter what the circumstance, it didn't matter the decree, he had a habit. He had a spiritual habit of praying three times a day. Not one time, not twice, but three times a day. Not when it was convenient, not when he was in the mood for it, three times a day. He had a system, he had a habit of praying. Mm. Every single day, he would stop and seek God. He listened for the voice of God. He brought his burdens to God, he petitioned God. He let God direct his steps three times a day just as he had done before. Just as he had done before. He prioritized his life around an intimate time with his heavenly father. What did Daniel do? He lived a habit. He had a system. He spent time with God. He spent time with God. He spent time with God. And, and I don't, I can't even like stress it enough as, as people getting upset that Christianity doesn't work, but they don't want to do even the basics of Christianity. This thing doesn't work. I'm a miserable Christian. Probably because you have miserable habits. Probably because you're sleeping in and not getting up and giving your day to God. Again, I'm not hating. This isn't judgment. No judgment here. I wrote this to myself. But if you're not happy with the results you're getting in life, then you have to change your systems of life. You need to change something about what you are doing. He had one small discipline. Do you know what it didn't say? It didn't say that he knelt down to pray for three hours a day. It didn't say the length of the prayer. It just said that he did it three times a day. What I want to say to you is this. Never underestimate how our God can start something big through something small. Never underestimate how God can do something big through you starting one small discipline in your life. Yeah, but what can I do? Who am I in this world? What can, what can my life change? A lot. A lot. You see this room? This room was painted with one roller. One roller. Dipped in paint over and over and over again, and it took a little bit of time, but one roller could change a room. That's a good roller, isn't it? That's a hardy roller, that's an expensive roller. But what I'm saying to you is this, what can one person do, what can one small habit do? It can change your world. It can. All right. One of the books that I would also recommend is another one called The Power of Habits by Charles Duhigg, Duhigg? D-U-H-I-G-G. He talks about what we call keystone habits. And what a keystone habit is, it's, it's one of those central things, a central discipline, one small thing that you begin to do that you begin to build other habits off of. Daniel stopped and prayed three times a day. This was a keystone habit that I promise you brought other elements into his life that helped him become who he needed to be for the king. It was, a, it, was, it was one discipline. I am going to pray three times a day. Through that praying three times a day, I bet it began to bring other elements in his life that brought him to the place that he was going to be. Maybe I could challenge you. Go walk for 30 minutes a day. Walk for 30 minutes a day. Yeah, but what could walking do? Let me just tell you something right now. 
You go walk for 30 minutes a day. 10 minutes into that walk, God, I don't even know why I'm out here walking. And all of a sudden, you actually hear God speak to you in the middle of a walk, in the middle of a hike. I like doing things by myself, like I would get on my motorcycle and I'd go for two hour rides on my motorcycle, just hearing the noise of my mufflers blasting my ears. But I could hear from God because everything else was drowned out. I love mowing the lawn on a noisy lawnmower so that I can just be alone with God on that lawnmower. And, and in my mind, let my mind speak some things that is sometimes can get too cloudy. See, these, these little discipline things can open up for other elements in your life. You go walk for 30 minutes a day with your spouse. All of a sudden, there's this new communication intimacy that you hadn't had in years, but you're also exercising. I'm just throwing some things out, guys. Daniel stopped three times a day. That was the keystone habit that began to build other habits on it. I started studying habits, transparent moment, because I wasn't happy with the habits that I had in my life. I'm a, I have a highly addictive personality. Um, I, could be, I could be a hoarder. Like I could be the person who, I, I can't just go buy one pair of sneakers, I have to go buy two pairs of sneakers three pairs of sneakers, four pairs, you know what I'm saying? Like, it does, like it, everything in my life is very extreme. And I was looking, I was like, I don't like the habits that I have in my life. They're, 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 they're self-destructive habits. I wanna be transparent, can I be? Is this a trusting room? I had a habit, I had a habit of doing things for people because they asked me, because I, I can, I can do things. But when I did that thing for somebody, I would attach a string to it, an emotional string, right? So I wasn't just doing it out of the goodness of my heart, although I thought I was. I was doing it so you liked me. I was doing it so you loved me. I was doing it so we had a relationship. But then I would see you have a party and not invite me. Yo, we got, a, we got a problem here. <laughs> I built that deck that you're having the party on. And you didn't invite me to break in the deck I built for you. Right? So, so I start pulling on that string. Where, where's my friends? Where's my help? Where are the people when I'm needing? And I realized they didn't know that I had attached a string to that. They thought it was a favor. They thought that the hamburgers and hot dogs they gave me when I did it was enough. But I was getting hurt over and over and over, and nobody knew it. Come on, I'm just being for real, man. And I'm telling you right now, a lot of us do it. A lot of us do it. Husbands, you go and you buy flowers for your wife just because you're thinking about her. No, you're not. You're lying. You want intimacy from that. You want a reward from that. And when she ain't in the mood, and I bought her flowers. Last time I bought her flowers. But there was, there was this string attached, this expectation that wasn't expressed. You cannot expect what you do not express. Over the last... 42 years of my life, I realized that I was emotionally and healthily putting these strings to things that I've done in my life, and it was creating more self-destructive habits. One of my major go-tos when I'm stressing is eating. I love food. Like, I don't just like food. I don't use food just to survive. Like, I use food for fun, entertainment, when I'm sad, when I'm angry, food, right? And it don't matter what kind of food it is. It could be junk food. It could even be, listen, I can get fat on healthy food. I can get fat on salad, right? Because you just eat it and eat it and eat it. I'm just, just I'm throwing this out there. There's habits. There's, there's things that we're doing in our lives that if we would change those habits, 
If we would adjust those habits, if we would replace those habits with good, godly, healthy habits, we would achieve those goals that we had set out in our lives. Three times a day, Daniel stopped to have an intimate relationship with God, just as he had done before. He started something small that began to change a nation. His personal prayer life changed a nation. One man's personal prayer life changed a nation. What could you do in your own home? What could you do in your own home? Before we ask, so Pastor Mike, what do I need to do? I think we need to ask a bigger question. Ready? And I don't think a lot of people ask this one because we're about our own agenda. But who does God want me to be? Before what am I supposed to do, who am I supposed to be? Who am I supposed to be? Am I supposed to be a godly parent? Am I supposed to be a bold witness? Am I supposed to be a person who's healthy? Am I supposed to be the one who breaks a generational line of obesity? Am I supposed to be the one who's a change agent? Who am I supposed to be? Am I supposed to be the first one in my family who's clean and sober? Who am I supposed to be? Once we figure out and we're revealed who we're supposed to be, now we add another piece of the application to say, now what am I supposed to do with that? Watch this. Based upon who you want to become, what one habit do you need to start today? So, let's just say you want to become a healthy individual. What one habit do you need to start today to do that? What do you need to add to your life today to accomplish that? Based on who God is calling you to be, what one small discipline will move you in that direction? And I wanna tell you, Smaller is better than bigger. Don't set such a big goal. Set something small that you can accomplish. It might just be, I'm not gonna hit snooze five times. I'm only gonna hit it once. Right, that's a smaller goal. That's a start. So don't say, I'm gonna get out of bed and run three miles every morning. No, you're not. No, you're not, I'm gonna tell you what's gonna happen. You're gonna do it one time, you're gonna throw up halfway into it. And you're gonna be like, this is from the devil. <laughs> so start with just saying, I'm gonna hit snooze one time instead of five times, you gotta win. You gotta win. And then do that for 27 days. Do that for 27 days. Do that for 60 days. Once you hit that 60 day mark, you've gotta have it. You've got something that you're automatically doing. That's why a lot of you can wake up before your alarm clock goes off because your body's used to getting up on that routine. It has a habit of waking up. All right, listen. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. If you're dealing with an addiction, if you're dealing with, 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 with not being clean or sober, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. If you're dealing with anger and you don't wanna be angry and yelling at your family, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Through Christ who strengthens you, through Christ. You have got to give it to Christ. You cannot expect what you do not express. Talk to the man. All right, come on, start incredibly small. Maybe you wanna spend some time with God, so set it, I'm gonna read one verse of the Bible before I check Instagram. I'm not gonna check any social media until I read one verse in the Bible. Start out small, okay? Maybe you're going to do a version devotional. 
Don't start with like uh, the whole Bible. Start with like a three-day devotional and be consistent with getting that done, okay? Maybe you wanna be more organized, so start by making your bed in the morning. If you make your bed in the morning, you're 20% more productive in your day. Even if it's making just your side. <laughs> I'm just saying because maybe the other person's still in bed. I ain't making your side. Make your own side. 20% more productive just making your bed. Because you already, the moment you got up, you accomplished a task. You accomplished something, all right? If you want to be a person that's focused, then maybe in the morning, write down what you need to do on a note card or on your phone and set reminders that it keeps you focused and on track, right? Come on, we don't have to do this all in one day, but just begin to work on setting yourself up for success. Based on what you want to become, what one habit do you need to put in place what new system do you need? Listen, if you want to lose weight, then go home and empty the house of junk food. If you don't do that, you do not want to lose weight. That's like the person saying, I am I'm not going to drink alcohol, but they don't empty their liquor cabinet. You're going to drink. The next bad day, you're going to drink. Empty it. Get it out of your house. Get the junk food out of your house. I'm trying to help somebody today. Some people are going to say, well, I don't do systems, Pastor Mike. I don't do systems. I'm spontaneous. <laughs> Listen, we all do systems, okay? Let, let, let me give you an example. Ready? This is going to be crude. This is so crude, I'm going to apologize ahead of time, but you're going to get it, okay? We all have a system, all of us pull our pants down before we go to the bathroom. Okay. That's right. If not, you have a messy situation. Yes. So that's a system. It's a system by which you use the toilet. We all have systems. It's how we accomplish things. You know that we drive on the right side of the road, and you know that if there's two yellow lines you can't cross. That's a system. And we need to create them in our lives spiritually. Amen. Spiritually. What is your spiritual system by which you are growing in your relationship with God? Well, dang, I don't have one. That's why Christianity doesn't work. It works when you have a system by which you're working it. But it doesn't work by accident. And it doesn't work by osmosis. You're not going to accidentally fall in love with Jesus. Woo, okay. Let me show you how this plays out real quick. What happens in life is something called the habit loop. The habit loop. There's a trigger, there's an action, and there's a reward, okay? There's something that will trigger a cue for you. Something that triggers, I am going to do this habit, Okay, there's a trigger, you see something, you walk by the refrigerator, you get bored, you get angry, you get hungry, you get lonely, it's the end of the day, it's the beginning of the day, I just got out of the shower, it's time to brush my teeth. Whatever the trigger is, it demands some sort of action or some sort of response from you, okay? There's a trigger, we all have triggers, we get triggered by things all the time. Okay, a trigger could be that you're at a stoplight and it turns green. What does that trigger? An action to go, okay? Whatever the trigger is, I walked by the fridge, I always grab a drink. We're gonna sit down to watch Netflix, I need popcorn and a drink. That's, that's the trigger, like I always do this. What's the trigger? Then you act on the trigger. So you walked by the fridge, now I eat a piece of cake. I put my kids to bed, they're in bed, now I pray for them. Huh? Come on, somebody. You just got done eating one cheeseburger? It's time to start the second cheeseburger.
Deuces. <laughs> whatever, whatever the trigger is, then there's an action that happens after the trigger. And when you do the action, you then get the reward. It might be a dopamine rush. It might be a sugar rush. It might be pleasure. It might be an extra seven minutes of sleep. That's why you keep hitting snooze. And then we go back to the trigger. And this is how it happens over and over again. There's a trigger. We see something. We feel something. We have an emotion. Most of us, most of us make the decisions in our lives based upon emotions, how we feel in the moment. We go. We do the same action. We get the similar type of reward. And then the process repeats itself. How do we build new habits? What we want is when the trigger and the action to be two things, listen, if you're taking notes, I want you to do this. We want it to be obvious. Say, make it obvious. Make it obvious. I'm triggered, I'm doing this action, I wanna make this obvious. It's obvious that I'm doing this thing all the time. Listen, I'm gonna tell you this, it's obvious to everybody else too. It's obvious to everybody else that you had seven pieces of chocolate cake. It's obvious that you've had to go shopping for new clothes because you put on more weight. You get what I'm saying? It's obvious that something's happening at home because you're more angry. It's obvious that you're more irritable. It's obvious, but it's not obvious to you. We need to make these things obvious. I'm triggered. I'm acting a certain way. Ready? And then we want to make it easy. Say, make it easy. Make it obvious. Make it easy. Make it obvious and make it easy. The first thing we want to do is make it obvious. If you want to change what you do, then you have to change what you see. Okay. If chips are a problem, get the chips out of your house. Can I go somewhere really dark for a second? If looking at the wrong thing on the internet is a problem, put an internet filter on it that reports to your spouse everything that you look at. If you don't do that, you don't want a change. And I'm not judging you for your habits and your hurts and your, I'm not judging you. I'm just saying that if you don't put a filter on it that reports your internet activity, then you don't want a change. You want an excuse for doing the same thing. You have to change what you see. What do you see for your life? What do you see for your future? What does your retirement look like? Come on, somebody. What are, you, what are you seeing? What does your marriage look like? What do your grown kids look like? What are you seeing? Make the trigger obvious. If you want to take vitamins every day, so I'm, I'm helping you out here, right? If you want to take vitamins every day, then put the vitamins on the center of your table. So then when you sit down to do breakfast or you sit down to do dinner, the vitamins are in your face. You see them. They're there, okay? That's the trigger. I want to take vitamins. I'm going to put them in my face. Every time I see them, I'm going to take them. If you want to read your Bible before you go to bed, listen, ready? Then as you make your bed in the morning, put your Bible on your pillow, so now when you come to get into bed, you gotta remove that thing before you actually get in it. Now you make the conscious decision whether you're gonna do it or not. But it's obvious, it's there, it's in your face. When I make my bed, I put my Bible there so that when I get into bed, it's in my face. Make it obvious. If you wanna write a note, I mean, if you want to be encouraging to people, then have like a set of note cards, maybe at your desk at work. And every single morning, because you showed up early, because you're a good employee, you're gonna take five minutes and you're gonna write a grateful card to somebody and send it to them. Have the note cards in the center of your desk. Make it obvious. Then you gotta make it easy. How am I gonna make this easy? I've gotta, I gotta stack it on top of a habit that I already have. I'm gonna close with this. I'm just trying to help somebody today. You set a goal, I wanna do 10 push-ups a day. So stack that habit on top of another habit. So let's say you make coffee every morning, right? So now you go, you put your filter in the coffee, you make the coffee while it's brewing. I'm doing 10 push-ups. I just stacked a new habit on top of an old habit. I make coffee, so while the coffee's brewing, I'm gonna do 10 push-ups. Now, I don't have to be motivated for that. 
I don't have to be in the mood for that. It's what I do. It's what I do. While the coffee's brewing, I do 10 push-ups. I don't have to inspire myself. I don't have to build myself up. It's what I do. I created a habit of doing this. Make it obvious. Make it simple. Start small. Could I encourage you today maybe to make a commitment to God? that I'm gonna spend five minutes a day with the Lord. Five minutes a day. Just, let's just think about this for a second. A tithe of your day would be two and a half hours. One percent of your day would be 24 minutes. 20, yeah, right, 24 minutes, something like that. Somebody do the math, smarter than me. I'm saying five minutes. Not even one percent of your day. Five minutes a day, with God, because here's what I know. Successful people do consistently what other people do occasionally. Successful people do consistently what other people do occasionally. So I wasn't happy with my habits. Wasn't happy with the decisions that I was making based upon my habits. So I created a new habit. I show up to work two hours before I have to. And I have a very specific thing that I do when I come into the office, how I set up my station, how my, where my bag is, how I drink my coffee, and I do the same thing every morning to get my day started. Because I wasn't happy being angry. I wasn't happy being self-hating. I wasn't happy that when based upon my mood and based upon my triggers, I would do things that would compromise my faith. I had to create a healthy habit of every morning was the Lord's. Every morning was the Lord's. And I had to build it and structure it into my life. Listen, I'm no full example of it. I'm still figuring out that strategy and those habits. I just got done reading the books three months ago. What I'm saying is this, for four years, I've been consistently building that time with God in my own life. I could never deliver a message from the word of God without putting that time in. If you want the word to come out of you, then you have to put the word into you. <clears throat> Maybe you're here today and you're saying, Pastor Mike, I can't create any of these habits because I don't even know God. Well, that'd be a great starting point. A great starting point would be creating a relationship with God. Start the relationship, introduce him into your life, and then begin the healthy habits of intimacy about speaking to him and him speaking to you. Prayer is you talking to God. Reading your Bible is God talking to you. Can he talk to you in other ways? Absolutely. But the Bible is the easiest way to get the word of God speaking to you. If you're here today and you've never had an opportunity to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, we'd like to offer that to you today. And we do that by praying a simple prayer. And that prayer goes like this, if you do repeat it with me. Dear God, I come to you just like I am. I believe that Jesus Christ is my Lord and my Savior. Jesus, I invite you into my life to change me and to make me new. Thank you for accepting me. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If you're watching online and you prayed that prayer for the very first time, would you type amen in one of our chat rooms? One of our online hosts would love to connect with you and get you started with a daily devotional called Starting Point. We'd like to walk you through your first six days in your relationship with God. If you're in the room today and you prayed that prayer that we just prayed for the very first time, would you allow me the honor to celebrate you for two seconds? Would you just wave at me and say, hey, that was me. I prayed that today. Anybody at all? Yeah, man, I see you. Anybody else? Real quick. Awesome. That same book that we talked about is available at the Welcome Center. Uh, it's called Starting Point. It's a daily devotional. It's, your gift. it's our gift to you uh, for that. If you're on the fence today and you say, no, Pastor Mike, I really thought we'd have more Bible verses and that you would have taught us the Greek and the Hebrew and done a better job. I wasn't really all about the ca cartoon uh, Bible lesson today. That's fine. We have a book at the Welcome Center called Welcome Home. It talks about Christianity. It talks about what we believe, and it has that same prayer that we just prayed in the back of that book. We'd love to give you that today, amen? Father, we thank you 
today that your word will never return to you void, but it will accomplish exactly what you set it forth to do. We thank you for lives changed today by the preaching of your word. I thank you, God, that we can create healthy habits that will bring us towards you, that we can walk away from the things of the past and walk into your light, into your glory. We thank you, Father, that we are blessed. Everything we set our hands to will prosper and be successful in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Offering baskets at the doors on the way out.